Hi, my name is Dan Morisot, and I'm the Senior Policy Advisor to the Ontario Regional Chief, Isidore Day. I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Kuchiching First Nation in Treaty 3 territory. Now, I'm not much older than most of you, so I can remember a time when I looked around and all that I saw was great despair, great sadness, great pain. I didn't grow up on the reserve, and as my grandparents had gone to residential school, I didn't really have a real connection to our culture. So I often wondered if I would ever be able to reclaim who we were, or if I would just be stuck, lost forever in between these two worlds. I even asked myself the question of whether I wanted to be here to watch our nations die. I had convinced myself of the idea that we would never be able to reclaim the nationhood that we so desperately desired. I didn't even know if I wanted to live to see that. But then somebody told me that I mattered. And I haven't told many people this story, but Calvin and Tunshai convinced me that I should. It was in February of 2009 that uh, I was a teenager with a fascination in politics, and I went to an event in Thunder Bay. It was hosted by a political party, and there was a fellow there from Quebec, and he was a new politician, and he wasn't a star in the party, but he was definitely somebody that I really wanted to talk to. So after the event, I went up to him, and uh, when everyone else was gone, and we started chatting. And I remember that I wanted to discuss a policy of his party, and he immediately asked me which First Nation I was from. And I don't know who told him, because the color of my skin allowed me to hide. And back then in politics, sometimes discussing who you were as an Indigenous person was not always a fun time. So I immediately said that it didn't really matter and that I wanted to discuss this policy. But he said, hold on a minute. I remember him saying, of course it matters. Never be ashamed of who you are. Your nations are important. And he couldn't think of a relationship that was more important to him than the relationship between his people and our people. And he also told me that there were so many others like me that I wasn't alone. And that we were just waiting for the day that we would be the ones to make things better. I met him three months later, and I don't know how he did it, but somehow he remembered my name. And I remember feeling that maybe I really do matter. And I matter to some important people. And I would never forget his words. And I worked very hard in this last election to make sure that my member of parliament was, for the first time in history, an Indigenous person. And I also worked very hard to make sure that the man who told me that I mattered, that I was important to him, that he became Prime Minister. And, well, here we are today. He's the Prime Minister. So if you ever feel like I did, if you ever feel like there's no hope for us, or that you may not want to be here to see what happens next, I hope you remember my words, that you're not alone because I'm here, and we're not going anywhere. Um, it's very important to remember that there's so many other Indigenous youth like you out there, and so much great work is being done. I'm not going anywhere because I can't leave you guys behind, and I never, ever will. Myself and many other young Indigenous professionals like me are out there right now making sure 
that our futures are just that little bit brighter. So don't ever think that you will grow up and that the door to your dreams will be closed. Because I promise you that myself and all of my friends will be there and we're holding the door for you. We're never going to leave you behind. So remember, I matter, you matter, we matter.